In this video, we will set up the first page of our Getting Started lesson. We'll learn how to add text objects, images, and shapes to our page, as well as create some basic actions to show some captions when we click on the graphics. After launching Smart Builder, the first thing that we will see is this welcome page with a link to the quick overview and the announcements. We want to create a new lesson, so we can use the File, New, or click the New Lesson button. We highly recommend that you follow along with this video and build the same lesson in Smart Builder. We have found that it works best when you watch a series of steps and then pause the video and try to repeat them. This is because users who try to build while the video is playing tend to focus on the small steps rather than the big picture. At the end of the tutorial, if you build in chunks, you'll find that you are much more comfortable doing these tasks in Smart Builder. So here I can see my page and the gray workspace around it, as well as things like my cast, my properties, the action canvas, and the object palette. Or I can add things like shapes, buttons, text, or a variety of other objects. Since we want to add some text to our page, I'll come here to the text object and select it. Then I can draw the text onto my page. Here we'll type the word stegosaurus. And then I can just select outside the text to confirm it. I can select the text object and we'll change some of the formatting. Let's make the font size quite a bit bigger and we'll make the text bold, and I'll also change the text alignment to center. Now we want to create our second text object, so I can copy and paste this text to keep all the same formatting. I can come up to my copy icon and use my paste icon. I'll move this over to the side and then double click to select my text and type my new text over it. From here, I can drag this object around and use these blue lines to help align my text objects. I can click anywhere on the page to create a selection marquee and then just drag around multiple objects to multi-select them. Once they're multi-selected, I can move them around together. Next, I will add a couple of images. So I'll come over here to my image object, select it, and then draw a placeholder. From here, I can double click on the placeholder to select an image. And browse my computer until I find the images that I need. Here are the project files that I downloaded with the images and text that will go in the lesson. You can find these files on the help page where you found this video. So I'll click on this image here and I'll click open. And if I need to, I can resize my graphic using the drag handles or move it into place. I'll do the same thing for the triceratops. I can click on the image object and this time I will just click to add my placeholder. That will create a placeholder at the default size. I can double click to choose the image that I want. And I can move that into place. If I want to, I can resize. By using the corner drag handles, it will maintain the same aspect ratio. If I did want to squish or elongate my image, I can grab one of the side handles and change the size that way. To undo my changes, I can come up here to the undo icon to get back to where I was. Before we move on, it's a good idea to save my work. So I'll come up to the save icon and choose a place to save my lesson. I'll give it a file name. 
and then click Save. And here I should see the file name up in the tab at the top. Whenever I have unsaved changes, for example if I move some objects, I should see an asterisk letting me know that something has been changed. If I click Save, the asterisk will go away. Next I will add one more text object down here at the bottom. So I'll go to my text object and draw a placeholder on the page, and I'm ready to paste in some text. So I'll go to my Project Files folder and open up the document. And I will copy some text, and then move back to Smart Builder, and I'll paste that into my text object using Control V. And then I can change some of the formatting, so I'll make the text alignment center. Next, we'll want to add a little bit of interactivity. What I want is when the learners click on one of the dinosaurs, a little caption bubble will show up. So in order to create that, first I need to create my caption bubbles. We'll find those over in the shape palette. There's some different callouts that I can use, and in this case I want to use an oval callout. So I'll click on that, and then draw one on the page. From here, I can resize it, and position it, and I can grab the little yellow morph point and change where the spike is pointing to. So that looks pretty good, but the colors are not quite what I want. So I can come up here to the Style icon, or go over to the Properties panel and change the style from there. I'll do this from the icon. So I'll click on the icon and get my select style pop up. And from here, I can click on these different styles until I find one that works for me. I like this one. So I'll click OK. To enter some text, I can simply click on the shape object and I'll get a cursor or I can just start typing while the object is selected. If I want to change the text formatting, I can make it bold, and I'll make this a little bit smaller. Next, I'll copy and paste to create my second callout for the Triceratops. So I'll right-click and say Copy, and then right-click and say Paste. To change the text, I can just double-click. I can change the size and the direction of the spike. If I were to preview this right now, this is what my learners would see. All objects, by default, are set to Start Visible, but I want to turn off the Start Visible property for both of these shape objects, so that I can then create actions that will show them. So to do this, I can select my shape object, and over in the Properties panel, I can change the Start Visible property from True to False. And I'll do that for the other one as well. I'll select it and go to the Properties, and change Start Visible from True to False. From here, I can start creating my actions. So the first thing that I want to do is set up the action so that when my Stegosaurus graphic is clicked, this text shows up. So I will click on my Stegosaurus graphic, and looking down on my action canvas, whenever I select something, 
I get a bunch of action blocks that deal with that particular object. The white space is my action canvas, and the gray area is my flyout panel. It is essentially my palette, like the object palette, where I can find all the blocks that I might need, and then add them to my canvas. When I select different objects on the page, my flyout panel changes to match the object. So I have these blocks for text, and these blocks for graphics. The first tab here has the name of the object I have selected. There are other action categories that deal with other things, like the page, or variables, or moving objects around. For now, we are just going to focus on the actions that control some of the objects on the page that we can see. So first I want to select my graphic, that will be my trigger, and I want to use the when stegosaurus on click block. So I will click and drag this onto my canvas. And from here I can choose a different trigger, if I wanted to use on rollover or on show, for example. In this case, on click is exactly what I want, so I'll just leave that there. Every action that you create in Smart Builder will have a when do block around it. So far, we have the when, so when they click on this graphic. Now we need to fill in something that happens in the do portion. So I will select the object that I want to show, the shape, and look in the flyout panel to see what's available to me. There's all sorts of things that I can do to shapes. I can set the text, or change some of the fill colors, but in this case, I just want to show it. So I can grab the show block and add it to my canvas. And now I want to combine them. So I'll drag this into here. And it will snap into place. And now I have a complete action. When the image is clicked, I will show this particular shape. Next, we'll set up a very similar action for the Triceratops. So I'll select the image, and I will add another when do block. And then I can click on the corresponding shape, and add the show block. And then I'll combine them by dragging this show into the do socket. If I wanted to, I could also add other show, hide, or various other response blocks, and start building more complicated actions this way. So, for example, if I wanted to hide this one when I show the other one, I can combine them like that. Now, when the Triceratops is clicked, it'll show one shape and hide the other. But in this case, I don't really need it to. So let's delete this block by dragging it into the trash. Let's check our work. I'll come up here to the preview icon. And now I can click on my images, and my caption bubbles will show. The final thing that we can do is to add an effect on those show actions. Rather than just having the object appear abruptly, I can change the dropdown and choose Fade as the effect. I'll do that for both, and then preview again. And now when we select an image, the captions show up with a nice little fade transition. And with that, we're done with our first page. Make sure to save your lesson. And in the next video, we'll look at creating a presentation using a timeline.